Do you end up with loads of frizz after diffusing your curls? Or maybe you struggle with those wonky, misshapen curls, or you just can't seem to master diffusing? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you eight mistakes that are most likely causing frizz when you're diffusing. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Gina, and if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. In my videos, I love talking about the science of hair, doing step-by-step -step tutorials, and really helping you problem solve with your curls so that everyone can achieve healthier hair. I also wanted to thank Bioionic for partnering with me for this video. I'm going to be testing out their Gold Pro Speed Dryer and their Universal Diffuser Attachment and showing you how to use this dryer. It's definitely a more lightweight option for you all. I've been testing out a lot of hair dryers lately just to have some more options for you depending on what your preferences are. I know different dryers are available in different areas, different price points. So I've been on a mission to share lots of different options for you so you can choose which one is right for your hair. And this one is definitely unique in a couple of ways which we'll talk about and the diffuser attachment is universal. So if you're just looking for a diffuser attachment, hopefully this provides an option for you. So this video is part of my mistakes that cause frizz series that I've been doing. And in each video, I just wanted to mention that there's nothing wrong with frizz. It's not necessarily something that you have to fix. These are just things that have made a big difference in my routine. But if you are doing any of these mistakes and they're working for you and you like your results, by all means, keep doing them. I just wanted to share some options or different things that you can tweak in your routine that I've noticed have really reduced frizz for me. So the number one mistake that could be causing frizz in your diffusing routine is not having enough hold in your products or enough hold in your gel. And I put this as number one because this is probably the biggest culprit for most people. You really need that gel cast in your hair to protect your hair from frizz. The gel cast is that crunchy feeling that you get when your hair dries. If your gel is not causing that hard crunchy feeling after it's dry, then it's not a strong enough hold. And you can definitely go for a medium hold gel. I definitely use lots of medium hold gels. It doesn't have to be a super hard hold gel, but using a gel that is formulated well and one that can create that film on the hair is what you need to protect from frizz. Now, if your hair is very damaged, then you are gonna need a stronger hold gel because your hair is gonna frizz up a lot easier. So for this routine, I applied a leave-in conditioner and then a gel. For my gel, I went with one of my all-time favorites, which is the Weedad Advanced Climate Control Stronger Hold Gel. And this gel gives me a lot of hold to the hair without my hair looking very hard and crispy and it's not drying or anything. And you can scrunch out the gel at the end of your routine if you don't want that crunchy look, but you would do that once your hair is completely dry. But we want that gel cast to form while we are diffusing to protect our hair from frizz. So I'm pretty heavy handed with my gel too and I like to apply my gel before I brush style and this just helps make sure that my hair is evenly coated. Like every strand of hair is coated with gel, which is what we want. Because if you have any of those areas that don't have any gel, then you'll get frizz in those spots. So if you are struggling with getting hold in your hair, then I will link you to a blog post and video that I have down below, which discusses how to get stronger hold. And I talk about some of the common causes of not getting hold in your routine. So if you've tried all the gels and you're still not getting a hold, definitely check out that video. I will have it linked for you down below. And I also have some other series where I share some of my favorite gels. So if you're looking for some more options for some strong or even medium hold gels, then you can check that out link down below. So another little trick that you can do if you're really struggling with hold is stop in the middle of diffusing and add some more gel to your hair. Sometimes when you add gel or mousse or even like a hairspray on top of hair that is already starting to dry, you get even more hold because when your hair is very wet, your products get diluted with water, which reduces their hold. So I like to damp style my hair. I don't style my hair soaking wet, which also increases my hold. And so those are some things that I talk about in that video that I mentioned all about how to get stronger hold. So mistake number two is having too much water in your hair when you go to diffuse. So if you style your hair soaking wet, it will take your hair so much longer to dry, which just causes you to need to use even more heat and a higher speed on your dryer to try and get your hair dry. Or you will just be diffusing for too long, which can in turn cause frizz. Plus, as I mentioned before, having soaking wet hair can dilute your products, resulting in less hold. So even if you are using a stronghold gel and you're applying it to soaking wet hair, then that is diluting it and making it not as strong of hold. So I actually prefer to damp style, but it's not as dry as you might think. It's somewhere in between damp and wet. I first towel dry my roots and then when I apply my gel, sometimes I will add in some more water as I go. You don't wanna have your hair dripping soaking wet. It's just gonna take your hair forever to dry and it's really gonna dilute your products. You can always add more water with a spray bottle to areas as you need it, but you don't want your entire head saturated. If you are somebody that definitely has to use a lot of water in your routine, then I recommend micro plopping, which is just where you take a hair towel 
and you scrunch out the excess water, even sometimes the excess product before you go in and diffuse. I still do this even though I don't style my hair soaking wet because I like to reduce my dry time even more. And this really helps to create a lot of definition and you get really nice clumps too. It helps encourage those curls and it helps to absorb that excess water. There's no need to go in and diffuse with a ton of water in your hair. It's just gonna take way too long to dry. So I can link you to the hair towel that I use in the description box down below, but you can even use a cotton t-shirt, anything that's absorbent but doesn't have those little fibers like a bath towel. So mistake number three is not using a well-designed diffuser attachment. So the bioionic diffuser attachment has prongs that extend out past the diffuser bowl, and that is what you want. If you are using a diffuser attachment that has prongs that sit down inside of the bowl, then that outer rim is just gonna disturb your curls even more because anytime that you are touching your hair too much while you are diffusing, that can lead to frizz. So having a good diffuser design like the universal diffuser attachment from Bioionic is ideal. So you see how the prongs extend out past the diffuser. So that's gonna be really great for reaching the roots as well because you can use those prongs to create root volume. Also, the curls are going to sit down inside the bowl without getting disturbed too much and the way it's designed is to reduce the airflow. So if your diffuser is not reducing the airflow and it's blowing your hair all over the place, that's gonna also create frizz. So you want something like this that has these little holes in the prongs and it's not gonna blow your hair all over. Even if I were to turn my hair dryer up higher, it's still not gonna blow my hair everywhere. You can also adjust the airflow with this diffuser attachment. So you can turn it if you want to close some of the holes and reduce the airflow even more. That will actually, if I turn it, will reduce the airflow right in the center. So if you struggle with those misshapen curls or maybe they get like a wonky shape to them, you can try doing that as well so it won't put out air right in the center, but it does around. So you can adjust it and customize it to what you like. So if you'll notice, the Bioionic hair dryer has a more narrow nozzle so it fits on perfectly. Plus the Bioionic diffuser is designed to work on any of their hair dryers except for their travel one, I think, which is a little bit wider at the end. And it fits on here really snug too, which is great. I haven't had it fall off while I am diffusing. And it's not too large also. That's the other thing that I like about this. So mistake number four is using the wrong settings on your hair dryer, using too high of heat and too high of airflow or too high of speed. That's just gonna damage your hair and can result in more frizz. And that can really dry out your hair faster too. So I usually prefer a warm to a hot air, but not too hot. This one actually has three different heat settings and a cold shot button. So there's a cool, a warm, and a hot. I can can even use the hot sometimes on my hair and it's not too bad. I usually alternate between warm and hot. It also has two speed settings. So there is a low and a high and the low is just perfect. It's the right amount of speed to where it's not blowing the curls all over and it's still getting the job done without taking forever to diffuse. So this hair dryer also has fair infrared heat, which is going to prevent it from getting too hot and give you that even heat flow without damaging your hair. It also has a ceramic barrel, which is said to help reduce dryness in your hair. So it helps your hair retain moisture without drying it out, which can then cause frizz. It's also very lightweight. It only weighs 17 ounces. That's without the diffuser, but even the diffuser head is still very light. So this is definitely one of the lightest dryers that I have. I don't have any trouble with hovering and my arm doesn't get tired. Number five is waiting too long to start diffusing your hair after you're done styling. The reason that I mentioned this is because I've noticed if I air dry my hair first and then go and try and diffuse, I just end up with more frizz because I'm trying to create Create that shrinkage and stuff on hair that's already started to set into place, which then just causes more frizz because you're disturbing curls that have already started to dry. And for me, air drying also causes a lot of frizz personally. So that's why I like to diffuse right away. And because I implement that micro plopping technique, it really helps cut down on the dry time. So I don't find that I need to wait to diffuse and air dry my hair first. I personally like to go straight to diffusing. That way I can set my curls in place in the form that I want them to be in instead of letting them just elongate and then try and shrink them back up afterwards. But if you're somebody that is not worried about getting more shrinkage and definition and volume and you want more elongation, you could definitely air dry first, let the curls kind of set in that more elongated form and then just diffuse at the end. So for me, the most that I can wait is about five to 10 minutes, but my hair starts to get that gel cast pretty quickly. And I want that cast to set in the plopped position, which is why I like to diffuse my hair first upside down, plopped over my counter, and I just hover first to set 
of the gel cast in that plop position instead of hovering upright when the curls are more elongated. So I usually do that plop and hover method for about five minutes and then I will do more of that scrunch diffuser and actually starting to touch the diffuser to my hair after the gel cast has set for like five minutes, but it's not set in place too much to where I then can't get shrinkage. So mistake number six is aggressively touching your hair and moving around your diffuser too much and too fast while you're diffusing. This causes much more friction, which then leads to frizz. Anytime you were touching your hair too much when you're diffusing, that can cause frizz. You also don't want to be touching your hair with your hands while it is still wet because that can also cause frizz. Instead, you can try just hover diffusing first, as I mentioned, to help set the gel cast, and then you can begin scrunch diffusing or cupping the hair into the diffuser and then lifting it up towards the scalp. Once you lift it up, you want to just hold it for a few seconds, but not too long. You don't want to start to burn your scalp or anything like that, so just hold it for a little while and then move on to the next section. You can also try pixie diffusing, which is just where you turn off the hair dryer in between each section. Some people like to do this if they struggle with those wonky curls because it doesn't blow your hair as you move on to each section and that allows you to really properly place the hair into the diffuser bowl in that plopped position before turning it on and having the air blow it. I don't find that I have to do that though with this diffuser and hair dryer because as I mentioned, it does a great job at reducing that airflow. So I don't find a need to continuously turn the hair dryer on and off. So mistake number seven is diffusing your ends once they've already started to dry or starting with diffusing your ends. And the reason I say that is because once your hair is already dried, you don't wanna keep diffusing it even longer because that could just cause frizz. So I like to start with my roots first. I do that hovering around my roots and I also focus on the links of my hair, but I don't necessarily start with the ends. I might hit them a little bit and you'll see that I alternate between, but I don't sit there and diffuse all of my ends first. I find that when I do that, I end up with ends that are very frizzy because I've over diffused them and dried them out. And then I have to try and dry the rest of my hair and your ends are still getting in the diffuser as you're trying to dry the rest of your hair so instead you can really focus on the ends towards the end of your routine and plus they're still getting air touching them as you're going about that's why you don't want to just scrunch diffuse the entire time you want to kind of alternate in your technique that way you're not causing any frizz and this goes for your roots as well and the rest of your hair once an area is already dried you don't want to keep diffusing it so you'll notice that I tend to alternate so I will do some scrunch diffusing and then I'll also flip my head upside down and I'll do some upright just kind of alternating those positions is also going to help you get more root lift and volume. So mistake number eight is pointing the diffuser directly straight up the hair shaft. So by that, I mean holding the diffuser in that parallel position with your hair. Instead, you want to actually hold your diffuser more of that perpendicular or facing towards your head, if that makes sense. So the reason I say this is because our hair's cuticle naturally points in the downward direction. So it's like shingles on a house and they point in the downward direction. So it doesn't make sense for us to be diffusing our hair with the airflow blowing up the cuticle. That's just going to create frizz, especially if you have high porosity hair. However, I do still do this method quite a bit in my routine because I like the shrinkage and volume, but because I have gel in my hair, that is what's going to coat the hair and give it that protective layer so you don't get as much frizz. But what you can do is sort of tweak the angle that you're holding the diffuser. So a lot of times I will cup the hair in the upright position, but but then once I get up towards the scalp, I will turn the dryer more so facing towards my head. That way the airflow is blowing towards my scalp, which also helps to dry your scalp faster instead of just holding it straight up like this. And then your hair is just blowing all over the place, especially if you're starting like this from the time that your hair is very wet and you don't have a cast yet, that's definitely going to just blow the hair in that upright position. And you'll see some frizz starting to form and you'll see a lot of those flyaways forming. This is also why I like to wait a bit before I start that scrunch diffusing it because that allows the gel cast to set and it protects my hair from frizz so then I can do a lot of that scrunch diffusing that I like to do in order to get lots of definition and volume. You can also try just putting the prongs right into your hair from the side and then lifting up. That's another great way to encourage shrinkage. You might just get a little bit looser ends though so you would still want to hit the ends too at some point. So then I just have a couple bonus tips for more shrinkage and more volume because that's what I like to go for, volume and definition. So only diffuse your hair
air upside down the entire time. It does create volume, but it also can result in uneven lengths in your hair. So you will want to diffuse your hair in the upright position at some point without waiting until your hair is completely dry to try and shrink up that bottom layer. So if you'll see in my hair, there's like two different lengths going on. So I do alternate between upside down and then right side up because when you're right side up, you can use that diffuser to dry the underside layer and you'll want to kind of lift it up from underneath and hold it that way you can set those curls into place instead of sort of neglecting them when your hair is upside down it's a little bit harder to really press them up so you can turn to the side some but it just doesn't get it as good as when you're in the upright position and you really try and reach that underside layer a lot of times this is the cause of stringy ends or ends that are just hanging down a lot longer in the back compared to the rest of the hair so the next bonus tip is to use those diffuser prongs to really lift the roots so the mistake would be neglecting the roots or not really focusing on them at all when you're diffusing that can lead to that flattened like triangle shape that I've talked about before so I really like to use those longer diffuser prongs to lift the roots so I place them right at the root and then I lift it up and hold it and that's really going to help you set the roots into place but I find that I get better results when my hair is just damp versus trying to do this when my hair is soaking wet it's not really going to do much so doing it towards the end of the routine has really helped so here are my final results after diffusing you can see I just have a little bit of frizz around the top section of my hair that's just halo frizz is completely normal a lot of times it's just a new growth poking through and there's nothing you can do about it as I mentioned some frizz is normal but hopefully these tips help to reduce frizz overall on your hair and don't forget the number one tip of having a stronghold gel and having a good diffuser design I would say those are the two most important tips that we talked about in this video but overall I really liked my results especially after I scrunched out the gel cast the frizz did not come back after scrunching out the gel cast and that's how you know that you used a good gel and my hair is still very defined I got lots of great volume so overall I was really happy with my results so if you've seen any of my old videos you might remember this diffuser attachment I don't remember which dryer that I had it on but it is nice that it pretty much can fit on anything however I do really like this hair dryer mainly because of it being so lightweight and I do really like that cool heat setting that it has and it's a sustained cold setting and I also like how it doesn't get too hot even on the hottest heat heat setting. So I alternated between medium and high heat and it was totally fine. I don't feel like it burned my hair or anything. And in terms of the dry time, I think it was around 15 minutes, but it was hard to tell because I kept like stopping in between to be able to show you guys these different diffusing mistakes. So I need to do like a full routine and really do a dry time test. I think it's a really good balance between heat that's not too hot and then also getting my hair dry in a reasonable amount of time. So no worries if you didn't take notes in this video, I will summarize all of these mistakes and then the alternative technique that you should try on the blog post that goes with this video, which will be linked down below. So be sure to check out the Bioionic hair dryer and universal diffuser attachment that I'll have linked down below. And let me know if you want to see a comparison video where I compare this one to any of the other hair dryers and diffusers that I've tried. And if you haven't already seen the other videos that I have in this series, I will link you to those down below. We've done the mistakes that cause frizz when washing your hair and also mistakes that cause frizz when styling your hair. You'll definitely wanna check out those videos so if you enjoyed this video, I think you might also like the one that I did all about air drying versus diffusing. If you are still on the fence about diffusing or you're still really struggling, definitely check that out. And we also cover how diffusing might actually be healthier for your hair compared to air drying. So I'll have that video linked right here on the screen and I'll talk to you over there. Bye everyone.